Hi folks, welcome back to the B29 restoration project. Uh, the last video, I showed you the whole process for getting these 3D printed molds for the new nose section uh, taken care of, as far as smoothed and whatnot. Uh, current thing that I'm working on right now is I'm getting ready to wax them. After a few hours of allowing the primer to cure um, this particular mold is the the bombardier nose portion of it um, there was a little bit of a dent right here which you can see by the white spot where uh, the print was actually had a hole in it I filled that in with some spray foam before doing all the primer and then there was still a little bit of a hole there so I just put some non-hardening modeling clay inside of it and just to kind of to fill it in so like I said, now I'm just kind of working on getting it ready to be molded once I, or I shouldn't, well not molded, but getting it ready so the PVA and the fiberglass, the primer and everything can be laid up when I get back from work. Uh, I use part all paste number two for all of my mold making and plug stuff. Um, in this instance, since this is just a conventional automotive primer, I'll also use the part on number two paste, obviously inside the mold for this. If I was doing a conventional plug and then a mold, I would use a part all paste and the PVA. Uh, the reason I use this is because it's very, uh, it's kind of tried and true. Like you can't, it, it works as long as you do it the proper way. Um, I have found over the dozens of molds that I have done over the, the past few years that it really it's kind of foolproof uh, when it comes to 3d printed molds like this like I said in the previous video I don't really uh, I don't really polish off the wax all that much um, I typically put one or two really heavy coats on it and leave it there to sit and then I'll do a third one and I'll polish that coat off and then a fourth one if I feel it needs it uh, if there's a lot of roughness to it uh, kind of like this part this part has a good bit of roughness from it just because it's not the easiest thing to sand smooth so this one I will probably do four coats on the rest of it I'll probably just do three um, like I said I'm just gonna put it on here fairly heavy I'm gonna let it sit long enough to basically put a coat on one of the larger molds. And then I will come back and put a, another coat of, of wax on here. And I'm going around here waxing everything. I'm waxing this surface because this will be one of the surfaces where the molds all join together. So you wanna make sure that you don't end up skipping out on the flange here and then gluing all your all your molds together that would make popping out the part a little problematic so like I said I got one really good heavy coat of wax on here um, some of these really deep recesses if it's a hard to get in there so I'll take a q-tip and then some of these areas that have a lot of wax build up I just grab that and I use a Q-tip to really get the wax down in that corner nice and thoroughly.
I've got three coats of wax on everything. Um, I came in here with a, I don't know what it was. It was a little under a half inch drill bit and then another half inch and then a half inch drill bit. And I cleaned out the holes here at the rear for these, uh, these half inch locating pegs. Um, I've got these all cut. This is just some nylon material that I had uh, left over. Um, and then I also have four locating pins here at the front. Um, after looking at it, obviously you can see this one, it's, it kind of like locates half of it and then the other half is on the other mold half. If I were to redo it, I'd probably set it up to where the, they're solid instead of them being on the 12, 6, 3, and 9 o'clock position, I'd probably do it like 1.30, like over in the quarters. That way you have two full pins on each, either side. But too late for that. So I printed these off. The holes are actually, I always oversize them a little bit, about 10%, which makes a 1-inch hole a 1.1-inch hole. And it ends up being a little too large for a 1-inch tube. Um, probably 3 or 5% would have been better. But anyways, I printed these little uh donkey kong barrels we'll call them and they're basically just a 1.08 inch diameter but it has a three degree taper on either end so they they go in here and they just locating the keys basically they fit fairly tight here with the paint inside the holes except for that one that one fits a little loose but that's fine the hole goes all the way through so we can push it back through where we want so get these in place and then this here being the top we will take that clean out the dust that's in the hole and then we will locate it here on top fits together <laughs> actually really nice much nicer than I thought it would to be honest um, man, that's, that's going to be awesome. Probably, and yeah, we'll see if we can get it in there with how it's set up right now. But I used a very similar method to this on my Beach Starship when I did new nacelles and uh, a wing center section for that. Um, instead of having bolts to hold it all together, I actually just hot glued the seams on those molds and that worked really well for holding it together. So, there we go. The fish bowl is more or less assembled. <clears throat> see, all of those locating pins, yeah, they would have moved a little bit, but we can just push them back through with a screwdriver. And then what I will likely do is I'll get a couple of just ratchet straps and I'll come around one back here and then one up here towards the front to help uh, get all this back tight together. Yeah, that should work. Move the camera over here and I'll let you look down inside the bowl. As you can see, there's a fairly decent sized gap here at either end. Not really surprised. I mean, it is plastic and it's going to warp as it prints. But the fit between the rear fuselage and then the, the navigator bulge or dome, however you want to call it, is actually really nice. Um, so that transition is really good. The gap, not too worried about it. What I will do, like I said earlier, is I will take some, um, I'll take some non-hardening modeling clay, and I'll just work it inside of that that gap, and that'll seal it off. And uh, this will be ready for one one coat of wax down the seam where the gap is, or where the, where the clay is. And again up at the front pretty much everywhere there's a seam that i put clay i'm going to put another coat of wax in there and i'll very lightly polish that wax off and the reason why i do that is one it seals the the clay so you don't get the epoxy into the clay and then where it's a really nice tight fit like up against the 
the navigator or the bombardier dome it pushes a little bit of wax inside there so you don't so it helps prevent epoxy from uh, spreading inside the seam so right now I'm gonna go find some lashing straps to wrap around this thing I have some the question is just where That was easier than I, than I thought it would have been. So. And if you're curious what the diameter of the fuselage is on the, on the B29, it's 15 and a quarter or 15 and a half inches. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, pre it's pretty big. Um, the circumference of the fuselage I think was 48 and some change almost 49 inches it's uh she's a big one obviously this is when my son should be out here helping this is not a one person one person job Or if I had a five foot long zip tie, that'd be even better. Ratchet straps would probably actually be the better idea. These are just friction straps where you put it on there and then you, it only gets as tight as you can pull it. Which might be the better, so you don't have to worry about <laughs> breaking the mold. Yeah, that's good enough. Down here at the bottoms. Yeah, you know, I think that'll be good. All right. I'll break up the hot glue gun so that can heat up and I can glue these edges together. And once that's going, we'll fire up the, the camera. Okay, folks, I went ahead and I, uh, I just hot glued the seams of this thing off camera. I don't really think anybody needs to see me squirt a hot glue gun on a crack, but that's basically what I did. So now, like I said, the gaps here, ooh, excuse me, the gaps here at the seam, just taking some non-hardening modeling clay. Um, you can even use like a really soft plasticine wax. Uh, pretty much anything you, you can think of that'll get in there that you can smooth out fairly easily and then squish into a, a corner or a gap. But I'm gonna use this stuff to fill in the cracks along the seam. So I will. There you have it. We have the new nose for the B29 pretty much 90% of the way ready to mold one. Uh, the only step left after this is to spray PVA in here. Let that dry. That creates, like I said, our physical barrier. It, it's like, it's basically a spray on liquid plastic, but it's water soluble, so you can wash it right off. Oh, excuse me. Once the PVA is in here, which I'll show in the next video. And that is dry. We'll spray our primer in here and then we'll start laying up all of these fiberglass layers. Whew. It's a lot of work. I hate waxing plugs and molds, which is why I don't use wax and PVA very often anymore. I've got better, less, uh, less labor intensive products that I use. But anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, the next video, cool things are gonna happen. Um, I kind of wish I would have, well, I wanted to do something very similar to this for the tops of the, of the nacelles, but it was just going to be way too much work <laughs> to get mirror images and anyways. 
so yeah anyways that's all we got going for now uh when I, when I get back next week i will get back to work on this thing and we'll get this nose cone laid up probably pop one out and i need to do i need to do more cows too so this is going to kind of be a precursor to seeing what my layup for my next set of cows is going to be i've got five cows right now four of them are original one of those is broken uh but repairable but probably it's just not working then i've got the brand new one that i laid up which is just heavy but it's really nice but it's heavy so anyways until next time y'all have a good one